Welcome to the Stone Cottage. As I was organizing my ideas for this video, I came across a quote from Kate Spade that perfectly matched my feelings. Style is the sum of so many things, beginning with a sense of who you are and having self-confidence. For some reason, people today want to label their decor style and then make sure their home perfectly duplicates one of those identified styles. There are plenty of videos, websites, and Instagram accounts that will show you exactly what you need. And as the trends change, you can head out to Home Goods or Target or Ikea or Hobby Lobby or Amazon or some other big national business that sells home decor and easily find everything you need to keep your home looking up to date. But rarely do I buy anything beyond new kitchen towels from any of those places, much less recommend them to my viewers. Instead, I want to encourage you to find your own look. And I thought by telling you how I arrived at my style, it might help you to recognize your own style, what you probably already know in your bones. Pause the video and go get paper and pencil. Every time you remember something you love but might have forgotten, pause the video and write it down. Or if you think of something you might find at a thrift store or a state sale that you want to add to your home, jot that down. And when you get to the end of the video, I hope you will have a personal guide to help you embrace your own unique style and the confidence to do it. Much of what I have in my home, I grew up with. I didn't necessarily love it at the time, like this peach picture. I thought it was way too brown and old-fashioned and kind of ugly, but I distinctly remember it hung above the sofa in the family room. And I actually left my little mark on this picture. This was painted by my great-grandmother's sister, Aunt Kate, and Uncle Billy did the calligraphy on the Dallas Morning News. One day, I was a little girl, probably third grade or so, and I'd heard that cats always landed on their feet. And of course, we had a cat, so I wanted to see if my cat actually landed on his feet. But I didn't want to hurt my cat, so I was throwing the cat up in the air over the sofa so that he would land on the sofa and, of course, not get hurt. But he got really excited, and he actually stuck his claws in the picture. Now, I've never confessed this in public. I certainly never told my mother. But those two little marks there are from the cat. And I was just so grateful that it didn't do the cartoon thing where the cat clawed all the way down the picture. That was a distinct possibility that that might have happened. But this picture has definitely grown on me over the years. It's always been in this frame. The frame just deteriorates a little bit more every year. This is plaster, um, and it kind of falls off sometimes. And I do have some pieces somewhere that I occasionally try to glue back on. I love this picture, this picture that I really didn't like as a child. But there are all kinds of little things, like this little cat trivet that was always in the kitchen. And we had Siamese kitties. That was the cat that, that poked a hole in the picture. It was a Siamese cat. And it's extremely mid-century, but I loved it. And throughout our home, there was... Victorian furniture that, again, I thought was very old-fashioned. Nobody else's parents had Victorian furniture. Victorian furniture was extremely out um, from about the 1920s on until very recently. Victorian furniture has been out of date, out of definitely not trending. But I love the marble top. And this piece here, um, actually belonged to my great-grandparents. It was part of their bedroom furniture. And this piece belonged to my sister-in-law, and she got tired of, of it, and so she passed it along to me. So I didn't grow up with this piece, but 
I love Victorian furniture as a result when no one else loved it. And this wrought iron bed that I've talked about before, I only use the head headboard, but there actually is a footboard. It came through a fire about 120 years ago. It was in my great-grandparents' home, and their youngest caught the house on fire, and it survived. So how could you not have it in your home? These two chairs, very Victorian, and the candle stand, um, and the chairs were always in my grandmother's home. She had purchased them as antiques. I think they are probably pre-Civil War, and I always found them very interesting. But again, I always thought the fabric was very ugly, and my grandmother referred to them as the green velvet chairs. They looked brown to me, but she always said it was green, so it was a really awful shade of green. Books all throughout my home. M my parents had bookcases, uh, built-in bookcases throughout all of their homes. And my mom says that one of her builders said, I've, I've never seen anybody with more books than you have. Are you really going to put books on all these shelves? And of course she did. I also grew up with oriental style rugs. Um, I inherited the neoclassical and Asian furniture from my great aunt and from my great grandmother. Things that were kind of odd and and most people wouldn't have combined this many different things, but that's what I'd grown up with. This is who I am. In addition to all types of furniture, there were so many objects that were always in our home, such as needlepoint, since my grandmother did needlepoint. Um, my mother loved brass candlestick holders, and um, she had a lot of copper. There were always warm colors, and my mother always set a, a beautiful table, so we always had beautiful dishes, and, and my mother also hated ceiling lights um, and always thought a room wasn't complete without a lamp. So that's just how I grew up. Now, as I consider the impact of family, I have to include my mother's best friend for all of my life and my second mom, Levita. Now, Levita's home was magical. She and her husband were extremely artistic and very whimsical. And things that have ended up in my home that came from them are, are often things like rocks. And I know that kind of sounds strange and, and I have a, you know, a relatively formal home, but I have rocks. A rock with an owl painted on it. Or a rock with a bird over here. Um, they also had a lot of folk art in their home. Levita was also the person that would go out in the desert, which is, I grew up in West Texas, and she would pick weeds and decorate her home with the weeds. So that's why you see me in the fall, definitely decorating with weeds. And she didn't mind if something was broken and been put back together. Um, and her style was very unstructured. Now, if my mother wanted curtains, she would call the seamstress and have her make pinch pleat drapes, and they would be very structured. If something needed to be reupholstered, my mother would call the professional reupholsterer and have it redone. But Levita would just grab fabric and drape it over the window if she wanted some curtains. Or she took an upholstery class and Re would reupholster furniture herself. Um, Gillette might be walking along and see a branch and say, oh, that, that looks like a bird. And he would pick up this branch and bring it in the house and it would become part of their decor. Uh, Levita also had the ability to pick up an item at the dime store. Yes, there were dime stores, not dollar stores, dime stores. And she would pick up just the least little nothing, include that in her beautiful wonderful home. Not only did I spend countless hours in her home, she was also called on any time we moved. She was the one responsible for decorating my mom's home. And so although they were my mom's objects, she's the one that placed the furniture. She's the one that hung the art. She's the one that styled the shelves. 
that's what Levita did. So I grew up seeing her work. Uh, and she just did it because she was a friend. And she even showed up whenever I moved. Um, she had this amazing ability to see the beauty in an object, even an object that was simple or broken. And she could display it in a way so that you would see it in a fresh way. Now, I have to tell a story on her. Um, I had moved into our first little home, and Levita came into town, and, and she said, oh, I'll come over and help you with something. And we were going to hang some pictures. And my mother, true to my mother's style, she showed up with a level and a tape measure and a yardstick and, she, and a little pencil, and she was going to mark everything out and plan everything out. And I knew from watching Levita that that's not how Levita worked. And Levita said to my mom, you know, we could really use some of those little hangers. Is there a hardware store that you could go and get those? And off my mother went to the hardware store. And Levita and I proceeded to hang pictures while my mom was gone. And I laughed at her and I said, you just did that to get rid of her. And she loved my mother. But my mother was too tightly wound to do it the way Levita did. And and Levita would put a nail in and just hammer it on. And if it was not right, she'd just take the nail out and redo it. And it gave me confidence to be brave and to think, you know, it's 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 not brain surgery. I can move it if I don't like it. But that is at the heart of who I am, is the people that I grew up with. Another thing that has impacted me is where I have lived. And it, it makes a difference what I bring into my home and how I see nature. Now, I originally was from Dallas, so that was really my family's home. Although we grew up in the desert of West Texas, Dallas was always home. And that's where my grandparents lived, and I spent a lot of time, uh, went to college there, and spent my early married years there. And that really imbued me with a southern style. And if you want to know what Southern style is, um, watch home tours for people that live in Dallas or that live in Atlanta or anywhere in the South. Uh, YouTube channels like the Potted Boxwood, very, very Southern. It also um, lent an element of formality to my style as a, kind of a basis. But the other thing about Texas is the state flower is the blue bonnet. Uh, and so... I thought, I'm going to find a blue bonnet picture. And so I have found blue bonnet pictures. And I, this blue bonnet picture I found actually in Colorado. And this little blue bonnet plate here, I found at a thrift store here in Virginia, strangely enough. And it was actually made by a potter in Fredericksburg, Texas, which is the hill country of Texas. But growing up in West Texas, there's not much to see. The ground is kind of brown most of the time. And what you see is the sky. And the sky there is this incredibly deep blue because there's no moisture in the air. It's a much deeper blue than anywhere else I've ever seen in the world. Sunsets are so spectacular and there's no mountain or trees or anything in the way to block that sunset. So you very much see the sunset and the dust in the atmosphere causes the colors to be so intense. So my love of these deep colors, rather dramatic colors, I think very much comes from the time that I spent in West Texas growing up. And of course we raised our family in Colorado and this piece right here very much reflects my Colorado years. This was painted by a Colorado artist, probably a piece um, maybe from the 1980s or so that was, I'm guessing, made in Mexico. Things like this. It's very, very heavy, probably made in Mexico, uh, solid wood piece, very heavy very heavy. And the artist painted Colorado wildflowers on it. So um, 
I think that the places that we live very much imbue our style, whether it's a log cabin in the woods or, you know, a beach house or living in the desert or living in, you know, in, in back east, wherever it is, very much influences the things that we are drawn to and what our eye is accustomed to seeing. And here in Virginia, I my home is very much um, this Georgian style with the, you know, the two story and that very formal look. That is very Virginia. But what's inside, I keep that formality, that Southern formality from my Dallas upbringing, but it's imbued with all of these other things that I have experienced, my experiences over the years. Now, my travels have also impacted the things that I bring into my home. And the ones that have had the biggest impact on me are the ones where I have a deep family history. My family was originally from the Virginia North, extreme northern portion of North Carolina. So I'm very, very comfortable in that colonial setting. This actually is a picture of my parents' home when I was a child. This It's in West Texas, but it is a red brick colonial designed after a home in Williamsburg. So that became part of our history is that colonial um, Virginia kind of a look. And also my family was from Western Europe, predominantly England, but France and Germany. And those things have found their way into my home. My home has a lot of French and English touches and little pieces of things that are actually German. Those are a great deal more subtle. The French and English, a lot more common. Now with all of these experiences and the influence of the people around me, I also have things that I love, colors that I love, patterns that I love, um, things from my children also. Those things have a big influence on me. I wanted the color to be a gold color. Now, my mother told the story that my great-grandmother's home had gold walls. So when I painted our previous house, our base color was um, kind of a, a mushroomy gold kind of a color. And after I had it painted, I said to my mom, is, is, was this like Big Mama's color? And she's like, oh no, it was darker. So when I went to this house, I'm like, I am doing a gold wall and it's going to be dark. I bet this is what Big Mama's house was painted like. Now, Big Mama was my great grandmother who died before I was born. When my mother saw this house for the first time and this color on the walls, I said, how's this color? And she's like, oh, that's way darker than Big Mama's color. Now, I get a lot of requests for the name of this paint. This is Blonde by Sherwin-Williams, and I always offer it with a caution. It works wonderfully for me. I absolutely love the color, but it is an absolute bully, and it does not go with everything. When we originally uh, painted the house, um, we did not completely redo it. We just had to paint it. And I used this color. And in the back bedroom, we did not paint the stained wood just for, you know, to, just to make it fast. That was just a, something to save time and quickly get the house rented because we rented it out first. And the stain color made the walls look mm -hmm like a really ugly shade of green. It was terrible. And I, when I first moved into the house, it was still stained. And I can remember waking up in the morning, looking at the walls and the stain and going, I can hardly wait to have that painted. It's just an awful, awful color. So definitely, if you're making a big, important color choice, get some samples paint it on the wall first, live with it, put it with the other objects you'll be using it with, 
and make sure it's going to work. So I love yellows. It was my very first design choice and has definitely been an important part of my home here. I also love combining patterns. In the late 80s and early 90s, um, I did a lot of decorating with Waverly fabrics. And in that period, they would have a, a combination, like a, a family of fabrics that um, you would have um, like a, a chintz type of fabric with a large floral and a small floral and a geometric. And they all were in the same colorways and they worked together very comfortably. So I got very accustomed to combining patterns and as long as I made sure that the colors worked um, because that's what Waverly did so well was combining these colors um, using the same colors and combining the patterns but I got accustomed to it so I could be brave enough to combine patterns and trust my eye um, and if you're interested let me know if you'd like to know how to work with patterns which I really love doing the items, the furniture, the decor, so much of that is from my family. Those are the things. But my style and my confidence unquestionably came from Levita. I don't worry about what's trending or not trending. I use what I have. Most of us already mm -hmm. know what we should do. We just need encouragement and a little bit of um, just the, the confidence that you don't have to do everything all at once. Decorating is about the journey and you'll arrive at the destination or at least close to it later on and don't feel this need to do what everyone else is doing. Maybe it's because we're basically tribal creatures. We have this need to look like the rest of the tribe and to do things the same way others do. We wear the team jersey in the right colors, build our huts the same way. And there are practical reasons for this. In the midst of battle, you want to quickly identify my team. I can learn which locally available materials will effectively protect me from the elements when I build my hut and help me to survive. Even eating the same foods and preparing it the same way will provide for my safety. I think that is psychologically what's at the root of this. But in today's day and age, our tribes have definitely blurred, broadening in some ways and contracting in others. We can see what people all over the planet are doing, but sometimes lose sight of what's closest to us. And if there are family pieces that you have that are still surviving, decades later. Don't discard them. Put them aside until you find the right spot to use them. And you might find that given just the right location and the right objects, you might grow to love these things. You might also see things in a new light. And if you love something, even though it's out of style, don't discard it. Hold on to it. First of all, it'll probably come back in style, just like Victorian furniture. It's taken out 100 years, but Victorian is finally coming back in style. Who knew it would actually happen? Well, my mother told me it would. Never get rid of anything. It will always come back in style. If you love something that you've gotten from your family, even though everybody else says, oh, that's really hideous, especially it'll be brothers and sisters saying, oh, that's hideous. Those things can add a lot of character and a spe special sense of home as you decorate with those objects. So back to Kate Spade, style is the sum of who we are and having the confidence to be who we are. Thanks so much for joining us and I look forward to hearing from you and see you next time.